Good Friday afternoon. Welcome to the More With Less podcast. And for the first time in a year and two weeks, we have as our esteemed guest, uh, Wake Forest Athletic Director, uh, John Curry. John, uh, welcome to the podcast today. Wait a second. This is the first time in a year and two weeks that you've had me on the podcast? It is the first time. And I remember when we met before you even took position, you told me I could have you on at any time, but then I just never asked. You, you haven't asked. I you haven't asked. found more important and more interesting, interesting uh, guests, which I can understand. You know, well, athletic we had directors Steve, are never celebrated. We athletic had Steve directors Forbes on celebrated. last week, so that, that, you know, you could argue that was a pretty interesting guest. The athletic directors are never celebrated, only tolerated. So um, <laughs> I just, you know, I'm here for you when you need to fill some dead air time, Wes. <laughs> Well, you're probably celebrating a little bit more in recent weeks, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, John, once again, welcome. Glad you glad we were able to get you on. And, it, you know, it's weird because with no sports going on, I've still found myself ridiculously busy the last few weeks. Um, so I guess you're kind of feeling the same. Amen. Amen. I've never been so busy, like, sitting in one place in my whole life. Uh, and I beg the forgiveness of my family. Uh, one of the problems with this w remote working is that you always feel like you can work no matter where you are, what you're supposed to be doing. And so uh, we've got to work on that. We've got, we got to get a little more disciplined about having some fun every now and again, right, Les? Yeah, I was watching a TV show the other night with the wife, and I got a tip about a, a new basketball commit. And I was like, got to pause it, got to pause it, got to take care of this. And, and then she's like, when are we getting back? I was like, I need to write this. I'll be, I'll be done right away, and, you know. One thing leads to another, and next thing you have no idea what's even going on on the TV, but, you know, it's, it's whatever. So, John, um, right after the end of the ACC tournament that got cut short, you know, got canceled, all of a sudden you and your, your team found itself mired in this COVID-19 response. What has the last couple months been like for you in terms of dealing with, with just that and the pandemic and trying to get student athletes situated? Well, uh, you know, that old saying goes that, um, you know, the last, uh, the last week has been the longest year of my life, right? It seems like it's been like 10 years since March the 13th or March the 11th, whatever the day was that the whole music, I mean, the band kind of stopped all of a sudden. Um, I'm really proud of our team. Our staff has uh, worked so incredibly hard, uh, worked seamlessly uh, with the greater campus uh, leadership um, to, number one, make sure... Uh, that we were providing a safe of an atmosphere and an environment as possible for our student athletes, staff, and students, and faculty, et cetera, but also uh, ensure that we were um, continuing the enterprise, so to speak. Um, we are going to play more ball games uh, sooner or later. Uh, we are going to graduate more student athletes sooner or later, and we just graduated. We, we will graduate on, on Monday uh, a whole bunch of student athletes. Um, we are going to keep going here. This is a temporary uh, problem. Uh, but it is a significant problem. So it is has really been a, a very busy time. One thing I've noticed is that you have made public statements in, in, in conjunction with the, the masking, the, the city initiative, and you wore a mask out on, on a couple of events, and, and you've been very vocal in terms of like the importance of social distancing. Why do you think it's important for you as a Wake Forest Athletic Director to show support for these initiatives in these times? Well, I mean, the mask thing, and I got my mask right here, right? Um, I mean, that is like part of our future and uh, our immediate future. And to be able to do what we want to do, which is get back into the stadiums and get our student athletes back on campus and student students on campus, you know, uh, uh, masking does help protect us. And it is a step that we can take, all take. And we've got to norm that, uh, socially norm that, so to speak. And so I really support Mayor Joins. Uh, Alan Joins, who's doing a phenomenal job of leading our city. Uh, we have the Mask the City initiative uh, here in Winston-Salem. Um, it is really cool how the state of North Carolina, you've had some, um, you know, textiles, uh, you know, reemerge and, and reimagined uh, for production of PPE and masks, et cetera. And, and that is important that, that people take those steps. And so um, uh, I believe it's a responsibility of mine and our coaches and our student athletes to, to help espouse that practice. What's, um, I know it's, it's middle of May. Everybody wants to know, I saw the, saw the announcement from President Hatch today about 
uh, summer two session being being done virtually. How are things looking in terms of sports for the fall? You know, that's what everybody wants to know. And I know you don't have a magic eight ball, but I know there's a lot of planning going on, John. Well, one of my colleagues, uh, and actually a former boss of mine, Mitch Barnhart, who's the AD at Kentucky, uh, I saw him quoted the other day as saying that um, he was surprised there had been such a rush to the microphone. Um, you know, so you've had this rush of people rushing to the microphone to talk about what's going to happen. And the basic theme of that is that nobody really knows, right? And so there's a lot of, of speculation, and it's important not to just add to the uh, extra noise of speculation. Um, I personally am a very optimistic. Uh, I'm optimistic because I see um, that, uh, that our community, uh, this community has um, uh, been able to, to you know, flatten the curve or whatever it is um, uh, here. Uh, I'm optimistic because I think, I believe that our university community uh, led by President Hatch uh, and Charles Iacovu, the Dean of the Business School here at Wake Forest, uh, have a very proactive plan, um, it, a scenario planning group that's developing uh, scenarios for Wake Forest and in our community. Um, and so all those things make me optimistic. If you look back at the last two months, which again, seems like 20 years, yeah. um, we know so much more today than we did two months ago. And so many things have evolved over the last two months. And so I am an optimist. And so I believe that over the next two months, we'll continue to watch things evolve and we'll see some successes and we'll probably see some setbacks. And we have to learn from all those things. But I'll be watching, uh, you know, Sunday afternoon, NASCAR race uh, for the first time. Um, you know, the Bundesliga, uh, the German the professional soccer league is getting started. Um, obviously, that's close contact um, uh, type quarters. Um, you have other things that will come over the next month or so. And all of those practices and evidence of people being able to get out and back into activities without causing, hopefully, knock on wood, uh, a reemergence or a resurgence uh, in virus spread, uh, all those are encouraging signs. Is there any talk within the conference of allowing student athletes to come back? Because I mean, I know the summer is a time when they would usually do you know, team workouts, uh, conditioning. I know the SEC, for instance, they had a meeting a couple days ago and supposedly one athletic director objected to a particular date. Uh, we won't name that athletic director. <laughs> but uh, uh, is there any talk about ACC allowing student athletes to be on a little bit earlier than actual students? Well, there's, there's all kinds of different scenarios and it really comes at the, at, at the end of the day, it comes back to what the campus is, is um, feels is safe and what the local community uh, feels is safe. So here in the state of North Carolina, which I, where I think we've had excellent leadership uh, from the state level, um, you currently uh, in North Carolina, uh, gymnasiums are not allowed to be open. So I can't go to Orange Theory and work out. Um, and so it, you know, we, we certainly can't open our, um, a strength and conditioning uh, facility um, in the Sutton Sports Performance Center right now. So, so some steps have to happen. And, and in other states um, the, where they've made decisions to go ahead and open some of those things. So everybody's on a little bit different pace. Yeah. Um, and, and I think there's a recognition of that um, at the conference level. Um, and we have a really good dialogue about it. In fact, we have a, we have a group text and we can exchange ideas and uh, we, we were in this week, uh, we had four days of our ACC spring meetings were this week, and uh, we weren't um, in Amelia Island, we were at our desks on Zoom, um, but we, we talked about those things uh, constantly. Um, obviously, there's no, the crystal ball is even worse when you think about will fans be allowed, but I know that from a football perspective, there is a lot of excitement and season ticket sales were tell, tell the fans about how season ticket sales were going for the football deeks and how that's a testament to what Dave Clawson's built here. Well, it's a testament to uh, coach Clawson and, and his student athletes and his staff. And it's also a testament to, uh, to the demon Deacon faithful um, who really embraced uh, the success and the fact that Wake Forest has the best football program in the state of North Carolina this century. Uh, which we will continue to repeat. Um, and uh, so, so I'm really encouraged by that. Uh, obviously, things slowed down a little bit as we got into the beginning of uh, April. Our staff had done a super job of uh, getting out early uh, to build on the success of the last four years, not just the last year. Um, and so we were way ahead for a while. 
Uh, then it slowed down. Um, it started to pick back up over the last couple of weeks. Um, and, uh, and, and we're in a, we're in a relatively good spot. Um, in addition to navigating the, the COVID crisis and the pandemic, you also made another big move a couple of weeks ago with the hiring of Steve Forbes as the new men's basketball coach. Um, obviously there's been lots of reporting about the search. You know, there are, there are a few guys in the mix reportedly. Was there any moment during that search in which you had like an aha moment with Coach Forbes, an epiphany of sorts, and you thought, that's the guy? And if so, what was that moment? Well, first of all, we are extremely excited about Coach Forbes and Janetta and their family joining the Wake Forest family. Uh, he has hit the ground running, uh, as I knew he would. Um, I said at the, uh, at the Zoom press conference, uh, when we announced that we had made a change and we were starting the search, one of the questions that was asked was, uh, what were some of the challenges going to be in the search? And I mentioned that we were going to have great candidates, and we did have great candidates. Uh, and Coach Forbes uh, won out over a very, uh, a very, very impressive field. Um, and that's a, a testament to him uh, and his long-term experience and success. Uh, one of the things that we did, uh, I did in this search is a little bit different. This is the 10th head coaching search that I've done as an AD. And um, um, we, we involved a lot more people from around the university community very early in the search as part of the search committee. And I, I've talked about that less uh, in some of our, you know, uh, uh, post, uh, post action uh, reviews and, and interviews. And having Rogan Kirsch and Michelle Gillespie and Jonathan Walton and Pete Brubaker involved early on in, in helping to assess our candidates and their fits um, for Wake Forest um, uh, was really, really important. Uh, success at Wake Forest um, means bringing the whole university community together. And that's one of the unique things that athletics has the ability uh, to do. Uh, but to, to bring the whole community together, you really have to involve the whole community. You can't just hire your guy and say, here's our new person, like him, right? It's really important to have um, uh, more investment and involvement in that, in that process. And so I, I would say one particular moment, um, and again, it was, a, it was not a, um, a fait accompli uh, that when Coach Forbes agreed to be in our pool, that he would be the person that we would select to be yeah. the next head basketball coach at Wake Forest. But when we got done with that initial Zoom interview, um, a couple of the comments uh, right away from some of our academic leaders were about authenticity. Authenticity and experience and um, uh, a true sense of self and a lack of pretense. And, you know, obviously those are all words that describe uh, Steve Forbes. And so to me, that was an aha moment where those characteristics resonated with a broader crowd uh, than just the athletics director. And um, uh, it is really important that a coach resonate uh, with, with lots of constituencies. It can't just be the AD's uh, candidate. Yeah, I had, you know, in interviews throughout the process and afterwards where, where other media folks prevailed upon me, a lot of them asked, well, was that was that John Curry's guy from the beginning? And I was like, I don't think so. I think he was one of a group that were in a bucket and he went through the process and that's who emerged. I never got the sense that it was like, I don't, I didn't get the sense that the, the search started off with Forbes at one and then five or six other guys underneath. I had a sense that it was a group of six and Forbes emerged. Is that fair? That, that is that is fair, Les, and, and certainly I've I've known uh, Steve and Janetta for um, ten or eleven, twelve years, thirteen years, fourteen, two thousand six or seven is I think when I first uh, came to know uh, Coach Forbes, and and so we've been professional uh, friends and colleagues for a long time, but we haven't been like, you know, extremely close. I mean, we just it's just circumstances that just just haven't uh, allowed for that, but we've kept in touch, and um, I followed his uh, career progression. Uh, with interest, and I, I, he's paid attention to mine. Uh, we actually got, um, um, we saw each other for the first time physically in a number of years when, um, uh, when uh, we, were in the, we were in St. Louis together. He was coaching at Wichita State, and I was the AD at K-State, and K-State played in the same bracket as, as Wichita. Uh, we lost to Ken, uh, Kentucky, unfortunately. We were in the 8-9 game and lost to Kentucky, and Wichita was in the game after us, and so Steve was actually uh, sitting in front of me um, on the sideline tables uh, there at the arena uh, scouting uh, the Kansas State-Kentucky game. 
uh, for Wichita State. So I remember we connected during that game and and um, commiserated on a couple calls that went the wild the other Wildcats, the Kentucky Wildcats way that may or may not have been fair. Um, but I, I remember like, watching those games. And I don't remember any calls that went yeah. against Kentucky that were that were wrong. No, I, or... I know you've done a good job of adapting to North Carolina, Les. Um, <laughs> But so that would be one time we saw each other, but but it's not a, like it's not like a, you know, we were you know talking every week for the last fifteen. Yeah. Years. Um, In terms, I would say that I'm fortunate, um, and and I take um, it's one of the fun things about being involved in something for 27 years, like I've been in higher education. I have a lot of relationships with coaches um, that that. Um, uh, in, in all sports and other athletic administrators. And I've learned so much from, uh, from different folks. Um, so it would be kind of like, you know, Dave Clawson and I were at Tennessee together in 2008. We got to know each other a little bit. And then, you know, we knew each other through the years um, uh, until I came back here last year and kept in touch. But we weren't like, you know, talking every week about how was the game last week and stuff like that. So um, it is a relationship, but it's not a relationship that, that precast um, this particular decision. What um, was it just the circumstances we were in in terms it was logistically possible or was there some other factor that led you to have so many other folks involved in this process, John? And it seems like you ended up appreciating the way that process played out. Well, it was uh, lots of different circumstances. Um, certainly the, the um, and, and I've mentioned this before, so, so I apologize for being redundant, but the uh, the fact that we've adapted very quickly in the last two months towards Zoom and WebEx and, and doing things in this fashion and finding legitimacy in, in, in conversations of this fashion, um, that, uh, that fact helped um, us and, and me uh, embrace the idea that this, this could be helpful to do it this way. And so if we had said on that you know, Saturday uh, after the, the press conference at 1.30, uh, that Saturday afternoon um, after we had um, uh, dismissed Coach Manning earlier that morning, uh, if we had said, hey, uh, I want to get our candidates together with, uh, you know, let's get six candidates and get them together with our, you know, seven-person committee and let's go do it in the airport Hilton in Chicago or let's go to the, <laughs> let's go to the, uh, the Grand Hyatt at DFW Airport or all these different places where typically these interviews go down, the Westin at the Denver Airport. Uh, you know, logistically, that would have been a real pain in the neck. It would have been really expensive. And it candidly would have been a deterrent towards towards making a decision of inclusivity like that um, because of the time frame. You know, as we've talked about previously, Les, um, a a coaching transition is stressful on everybody involved, but it is most stressful on the student athletes involved. And so, one of the principles as an athletics director uh, that one has is you got to shorten that period of uncertainty however you can. And part of that is. Is, is building a good network through the years and, and having knowledge and having, a, you know, kind of a Rolodex so you can call the right people to do background stuff. And um, that's part of that organization, understanding your, uh, your institutional fit. So there's lots of ways to do that, um, to, to shrink that amount of time of uncertainty. But um, the more people you involve uh, creates more complexity, which can lengthen or broaden the term, the time, uh, the time of uncertainty. Uh, so in this particular case, uh, as you asked in your question like 30 minutes ago here, that I apologize I rambled on about, um, it was actually it was actually very helpful. Um, do the press conference the next day. You guys end up rolling out. I think, or maybe is, I think it was the Thursday. You guys rolled out the introductory video where you toss him the whistle and he spikes his uh, spikes his mask. Uh, what were your thoughts about how that came together and, and were you happy with the finished product and, and kind of the buzz it created? Well, my son said it was cringeworthy. I mean, he totally ripped me and said, Dad, come on, man. Um, so other than my son, we've got uh, some good feedback. Uh, I think my wife was kind of 50-50 on it. But, you know, at, at a, I, don't, I haven't checked it lately, but as of like last week, there had been like 750,000 views on YouTube of that video. Um, some of my buddies um, – that aren't wake buddies that, that I keep in touch with from growing up. Um, you know, they were sending me messages on, the, on that group text about how this thing ended up being like, you know, Tom Arnold and people like, you know, totally unconnected to sports are like talking about it and critiquing it and critiquing the production quality and all that kind of stuff. And, and, 
that means exposure for Wake Forest basketball and exposure for Steve Forbes and exposure, you know, for those banners that are up in that facility. I mean, that's, that's really good that people are talking about Wake Forest basketball and talking about Wake Forest University uh, and Winston-Salem. Um, so, so I, I really uh, commend um, Cameron Speaks and Barry and Will, uh, Roger, all the people that were involved in that whole creative um, uh, a rollout, so to speak. They're really excited to, to put into play uh, the plans that, that, that they had developed, and we continue to look forward to amplifying it. The only part that I added to that was the whistle part. And the whistle part comes from um, a, uh, an old colleague of mine, um, kind of a mentor, uh, years ago, who said, Curry, there's two kinds of coaches in this world. Uh, there's the kind that when you hire them, they say, what kind of courtesy car am I going to have? And then it's the other kind that says, give me my whistle. And uh, so that's kind of a, that's, that's the meaning of that from the whistle standpoint is that, you know, Steve Forbes is the kind of coach that says, give me my whistle. I want to get to work because that's the part um, that is most important to him. And that's really the part that is most important about success uh, in these particular uh, positions. The last part I will say, there is some subtle meaning as well. And I was trying to explain this to my son when he said I look dorky walking into the building. I was like, well, son, that's because I'm like the boring, stodgy, you know, Wake Forest. And then Steve's like the new, like energetic, um, you know, fun kind of kind of coach. So so there, I was playing the straight guy. I was like Ed McMahon to Johnny Carson. That's you're really dating yourself now, John. <laughs> So, well, Johnny Carson, yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, the fans aren't able to get together and 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 share in this fun experience with you. Uh, we obviously don't have any games for several months at best. Do you have any idea the level of excitement in Deacon Nation right now? Have you got a sense of it? Because I certainly have. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, I, I have. Uh, I, I've been really pleased to hear. Uh, from lots of folks. Uh, I probably haven't spent as much time, um, you know, reading Twitter and stuff like that. I do a little bit, but 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 not as much. I really hadn't had time as much uh, during the actual search process and post process, but um, I'm just glad that fans are excited and feel a sense of hope. Um, that's really important, especially right now uh, in this time of the COVID crisis and this uh, national or uh, global uh, pandemic uh, crisis. But um, I do feel uh, I am very happy uh, for our fans to be excited, and uh, they deserve that. Um, our basketball uh, program uh, deserves to have excitement, uh, deserves to have national attention, um, and I know that uh, under Coach Forbes' leadership, we're going to competitively uh, evolve in a way that, that, that puts us in a position to win championships. He can't get out in the community. He can't get with the guys in the gym. But what have you seen from him the last two weeks in terms of the work he's he's put together? Once again, it's it's been two weeks. What what do you like of what you've seen so far, John? Well, one of the factors um, with Coach Forbes is he's been through transitions before. He's been through tough transitions. He's come into places and had to turn them around and reignite him, re-energize him. He's had to come in and win trust uh, with players and win trust with staff. So he's he's been through it uh, before. Um, and so there's a comforting factor as an athletics director um, to be able to, um, or maybe comforting is not the right word, but there's a bit of a, um, uh, uh, a, a, maybe a satisfaction or maybe just a relaxation when you say, oh, this, he's got it, this guy's got it. Like, I mean, I don't ever have to run down and say, hey, Coach Clawson, have you thought about this? You know, because he's got it. He knows what to do. And he's got confidence in, in how he's going to go about doing it. Not arrogance, but confidence. There's a big difference. Uh, and so with, with Coach Forbes, um, you know, when we talk on the phone or, or whatever, um, and I, I might mention, hey, you might think about this as it relates to, you know, some element of Wake Forest or Winston-Salem or our community or our strength or whatever. And then, and then he'll share some news about, you know, a particular item or whatever. And it's a, for me, it's a, you got it. We're going to be all right. Um. Has there been any surprises for you in this first two weeks? Anything that, that, that's come about or that he's done or accomplished or not accomplished or any surprises the last couple of weeks? Um, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say there haven't been any surprises uh, because that would sound, 
you know, arrogant and expectational. Um, it's, uh, I believe that he's, um, well, let me just say this. I think he's ex exceeded my expectations. I had high expectations and he's exceeded them in terms of the way uh, he's been able to hit the ground running, uh, bring his staff, um, you know, they climb out of the car and start working right away because they know how they work to work with each other. They know the people, um, you know, he's got, you know, um, uh, B.J. Mackey is an all-time leading scorer at South Carolina. I mean, he knows high-level basketball. And, uh, Brooks Savage, who's his longtime assistant, um, I actually knew Brooks when he was a GA. It was kind of fun to sign his contract uh, the other day. His pay rate has increased a lot uh, from 2007. Um, but I've told him that he's always a GA to me. Um, to see those guys know exactly what to do um, in terms of how they're going to build a roster and stuff like that has, has been – it's felt good. It's felt good to see that. Um, the genuine excitement that he engenders uh, is really cool as well um, to see a person that's worked his way up uh, from, you know, starting out at the very, at the very, um, I don't want to say bottom, but at the, a, a very basic level of basketball and higher ed, you know, and, and to work his way up to a place like this and appreciate it the way he does. That, that's all cool stuff. He got knocked down once or twice too and came right back up from it. It happens. <laughs> well, John, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up with this. Um, you introduced, uh, he, he was announced the day before, but you formally introduced in our virtual press conference, um, Forbes is a new head coach, on the one-year anniversary of your start date a year ago, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um, I know you did some other evaluations in the last few months of some of your other programs. How would you evaluate John Curry's first year on the job? Um, that, that's hard for me, uh, because I'm, you know, like a lot of folks, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly self-critical and have high expectations. Um, I think there's, uh, there's been areas that I feel really good that we made a lot of progress and there's been other areas where I just haven't been able to, uh, dig into as much as I would like to, you know, I, I, I will know every single student athlete's name by face and by sight at some point, And I just hadn't gotten there yet. I'm working on it. Um, so there's a lot more uh, to do and a lot of, um, uh, a lot of uh, um, progress to be made. Uh, I am very pleased though that we've built, um, you know, we've made a lot of progress on building uh, a senior staff and a leadership team and a department culture. I think we've made a great progress uh, in that regard. Um, a lot of great pieces here already, obviously, um, but some of the folks we've been able to attract and, and add to the team here uh, I think have helped uh, a great deal. And going through these really challenging times, um, whether it's, you know, the, obviously COVID, which is most the most significant thing, but then, uh, you know, going through a coaching search and a coaching transition, um, everybody's got to count on each other and trust each other and, um, and, and uh, work together. And some of the coolest things that happened were in that intermediate time, I would say to Sheena Poe, um, uh, sometimes virtually, sometimes through a mask out here. Um, I would say, hey, we, we need to make sure this is going on and somebody's doing this. And she would, she would say, don't worry, Ellie and Lindsay are doing that. They've already thought of that. And so that's been really cool to see how, um, how our staff has come together. What has you um, most excited about Wake Forest Athletics for, for the academic year uh, approaching, assuming that the cloud is relatively lifted and we have a season that is, is somewhat normal-ish. Well, what has you most pumped about this coming year? Well, really you look across the board, uh, we're on the rise in, in every sport. And um, uh, Barbara Walker and, and I were doing uh, uh, Coach Deleuze's annual review uh, today with, with uh, Coach Tony Deleuze, our women's soccer coach. And he's, you know, he's fired up about, about uh, about our senior class and the experience that we have uh, coming back uh, this year for women's soccer. We had a disappointing conference season last year, and um, we're going to be we're going to be we're going to have all the pieces to have a to make a run this year and make a run into the tournament and beyond. And so you can really go around all our different sports and look at uh, look at that. Uh, and now that we have um, new leadership in men's basketball uh, and new excitement in men's basketball, um, really across the board. You know, feel really good about the competitive opportunities uh, for our programs. Uh, any final words for Deacon Nation? 
uh, thank you for all the energy um, that you keep coming with. Um, this is a moment in time where um, we've got to be together to amplify our brand. Um, we may not have as many as some, uh, but uh, we're smarter than most. And uh, we can put it together with our whole uh, uh, broad, broader Wake Forest community uh, and, and really support our teams and our student athletes and, and make this a great year. John, thank you so much for being on the More With Less podcast. Uh, we'll have to do it again soon. All right. Thanks, Les. Be safe.